have you with us. Uh, you know, we had uh, Justin Shaw on with us yesterday. We talked about homecoming weekend, uh, and from his perspective, uh, a pretty good weekend uh, in terms of uh, uh, making sure that everybody was safe and moving about okay here in Indiana County and in Indiana Borough. Uh, I'm, I'm sure it was a, a pretty good weekend from your perspective as well. Overall, I think the weekend was a success, uh, and I think that success goes to the teamwork effort that goes into the planning and preparation uh, before the weekend, during the weekend. You know, I always say we're blessed to have the law enforcement that we do have here in Indiana County with all of our various borough police officers and our state police, the sheriff's department, our detectives. Uh, you know, a lot of planning went into place in order to uh, identify risk ahead of time. Uh, we, we, we definitely identified a couple risk of individuals with uh, stolen guns or firearms that we were able to get warrants for and get off the streets before the weekend even really started. And during the weekend when risks were identified, you know, our police did a fantastic job uh, of safely placing those individuals under arrest, making sure nobody got hurt, making, making sure they didn't get hurt mm -hmm. uh, so that the vast majority of people that come here for homecoming weekend and just want to have fun and do not want to cause trouble were able to go out spend money in our local businesses, and have a good time. It's it's a scary thing for folks to hear that uh, somebody was caught with illegal guns or stolen guns, uh, and the, they're driving about in the community because we sort of then get the idea that, uh, well, these are the ones you caught. Who didn't you catch? Uh, but, uh, you know, that, that again, as I said to Chief Shaw yesterday, it, it really points out how we all need to be vigilant and watchful, and if something seems wrong, make sure the authorities know about it. Don't try to do something about it yourself call the proper authorities. Absolutely. That, that's one of the things that we continue to relate to members of our community. Uh, I'm going out to all the fire halls throughout Indiana County, asking them to relay information to us that they see when there's risk identified. We certainly do not want citizens taking any measures into their own hands. Uh, we don't want anybody to be hurt. We want them to contact law enforcement. Uh, and often I'll have the question of people saying, you know, Bob, I, I thought something was wrong. I wasn't sure, and I wasn't sure if I should call or not. And I always tell individuals, if you think something's wrong, trust your gut, call the police, provide us that information. The worst thing that happens is they conduct an investigation and nothing's wrong, mm -hmm. and, and everyone's safe and, and we feel good. Uh, the best thing that could happen is they've identified a risk. There are eyes and ears in the community and we were able to stop a situation before it, it turned into something it didn't need to turn into. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so you were telling me before we opened the microphones here uh, that uh, you're going to have a release as possibly as early as, as this afternoon uh, about a, a drug bust uh, that uh, required some behind-the-scenes investigating, uh, but you got yeah. it done. We, we got it done, and, and, you know, I want to highlight again the members of our law enforcement the work they do, and I think if individuals outside of the criminal justice system saw everything they actually do, they would be pretty amazed. I know I'm pretty amazed. Uh, right now, across the country, we have a horrible fentanyl issue. Fentanyl is everywhere. And what we're finding is it's not just mixed in with heroin. It's mixed in with every drug there is. Uh, we have individuals, and I always share with people. You can find us information online. We're not just trying to share scary stories. I'm sharing real stories. But what's happening is fentanyl is incredibly inexpensive to make. They mix it with other cutting agents and they're pressing it into pills and they're making it look like Percocets or Vicodin or Oxycodone, uh, medication to treat ADHD like Adderall or Ritalin. And individuals think they're just getting an Oxycodone from somebody or students who think, you know, I need to stay up late and write a paper, let me take an Adderall, uh, which I absolutely shouldn't do without a doctor's prescription, uh, and they're not getting what that medication really is. They're getting fentanyl, mm -hmm. and they're overdosing, and they're dying. Uh, and, and this is just a horrible, horrible issue with our country right now. Uh, our drug task force and our law enforcement is really focusing on working to get the fentanyl dealers off the street as quickly as we can. Uh, so the case we have, uh, in, yesterday it occurred, and we were able to conduct a search warrant and effect an arrest warrant on an individual here in Indiana County 
who now has charges in western Pennsylvania and in Nevada, and essentially they are mailing pills through the U.S. Postal Service that are fentanyl pills to individuals to sell. Mm -hmm. uh, so here, here's something where, you know, we always get concerned about individuals that may come from Pittsburgh or Cleveland and Johnstown and Philadelphia. This is coming from Nevada. And, and what we're seeing more and more is it's coming from anywhere the mail serves and individuals are, are sending pills, buying pills online. They're fentanyl and they're selling them in our community. So this individual is now in custody. is going to be facing uh, charges and, and we presume they're going to end up in federal prison, uh, whether it be here or in Nevada. Interesting that um, that this is a, a, a male case, uh, because how do we learn those things, uh, ex except for somebody is tipped off in some way or some other behind-the-scenes investigative tool that is used? Obviously, you can't reveal what those investigative tools are because you don't want to give away uh, something of that nature. Uh, but um, how insidious it really is. Uh, that uh, these are so prevalent now, and they are finding so many ways to get them into communities. Uh, and, and again, it, it's scary stuff. It, it, it's truly scary. Uh, we had a juvenile that was charged with drug dealing, possession with intent to deliver, for selling fentanyl pills, and that juvenile was 14 years old. You know, th this, yeah. is, this is a child in eighth grade. Uh, it is just throughout our county, and, and it's not in Indiana County, issue. It is an America issue. It is across the country. We're seeing it everywhere. And that's why we're asking people, you, you know, have those talks with your children. Um, tell them to look the information up. We can Google anything. Mm -hmm. It's not something parents are just telling their children just to try to scare them. We're really trying to provide that accurate information because what we're finding is fentanyl is, is in everything. Um, and, you know, good, good people around the world are dying because of it. Have uh, am I correct in saying that uh, fentanyl is, is even being found in marijuana? Fentanyl is being found in marijuana. Fentanyl is being found in every drug. Uh, when we talk to uh, drug treatment facilities where they're providing drug tests for individuals that are in treatment, they will have individuals who say, "You know, I'm only using marijuana. I'm only using, you know, name whatever drug you want," mm -hmm. and they're testing positive for fentanyl. And they say, wait a second, I, I've only been using marijuana. I'm not using anything else. Yeah. And they said a drug test says it's fentanyl. There's fentanyl in there. Wow. wow. Uh, so it is, it is just a truly, truly scary issue. And I think it's very important that we're, we're having those talks with our children. We're having those talks with everyone in our community to make sure we, we understand that. And, again, when we see something, we call the police. You know, we work towards getting those individuals in the prison and off the streets. Representative Struzzi has the legislation that he's introduced uh, for the test strips, I believe, mm -hmm. um, which which I, I, I think that's a pretty important piece of legislation. Would you agree? I, I would agree. I've talked with Representative Struzzi a great deal about this. We've talked with district attorneys across the state with regards to this issue, uh, and, and we find that it's very important. It's going to save lives, period. Yeah, yeah. All right, so there's a very, very serious drug issue going on. It is never going to go away. Um, there, there's always going to be a drug issue. Uh, and so uh, just as the people who are on the wrong end of it are, are doing everything they can to get it in the community, people on the right end of it need to do everything they can to make sure that it's stopped. Absolutely. And, and you know, in the law enforcement community, again, I, I always wish I could kind of pull the curtain back and let individuals outside the criminal justice system know just how good and hardworking our police officers are. Mm -hmm. uh, but those drug busts uh, do not occur without a lot of footwork and investigation, a lot of information sharing, not only between officers, but between agencies here in our county, in the state, at, at the federal level, uh, sharing resources, information, all towards that goal of, you know, we don't care who gets credit for it. We want those individuals off the street. We want those individuals in prison because it's, it's going to save lives. Uh, and just watching our law enforcement at work in a county is amazing. Yeah, absolutely. We're talking with Indiana County District Attorney Bob Manzi this morning about a number of different issues. Uh, we've talked about drugs. Uh, we've talked about weapons. Uh, um, and, and I know that there are frequently events held 
uh, to protect people from scams. We had another scam report on our news cycle yesterday morning. Uh, and, and those educational efforts uh, having to do with scams, uh, people might look at that as saying, oh, that's just a money crime. Uh, it's a very serious crime. Uh, and there are people who are being drained of their life savings because of, of things like this and, and being victimized in such a way. And I, I know those educational efforts are really, are really, really important. Uh, and, uh, again, it's one of those cases where we need to watch out for each other. We need to look out for each other. We need to look out for a vulnerable population. Uh, you know, I will hear that, well, it's just money. Uh, and I've had a lot of individuals who have been victims of the financial crimes. You know, they lose ten, twenty, fifty, a hundred thousand dollars, and they ultimately all say, "I'd rather somebody punch me in the face than take fifty thousand dollars of my money because I'm <laughs> never getting that back." Yeah. Um, you know, it, it's very important that we talk about it. When individuals are victims of a scam, they go through a lot of emotions. They're they're angry at, at the individual that scammed them. They're they're angry at themselves. They feel foolish. You know, they feel well. How you know? I don't want to tell people I was scammed. I don't want to look stupid or I don't want to look foolish. Mm -hmm. And we always try to tell people we have victims of scams across the spectrum of employment, ages. You know, we'll have attorneys come in that have been victims of scam. We have people with doctorates. You know, we have medical professionals. We have police officers. There, there are individuals in pretty much every field I know that have been victims of a scam. These thieves are professional thieves. They spend, you know, just like I spend every day working in the criminal justice system, they spend every day trying to figure out how to steal from people. Mm. And they get good at it. Uh, so we want to be able to look out for folks. We want to look out for our seniors. Uh, you know, they, they target everybody. Uh, they'll make phone calls or send mailers or use an electronic means. They're going to target everybody. If they target a 1,000 people a day, and they get one person, that's really what they're hoping for. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, and chances are when that money's gone, it's not coming back. Scams and identity thieves, they're twin brothers. <laughs> oh, absolutely, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. It is, it is out there, and it's everywhere, and, and folks need to be very, very cautious. Well, I thank you so much for coming across the street to join us once again, raise up the, uh, the issues before the folks, put the alert out there, and hope that everybody is watching out for each other. Well, I appreciate the time, and, and anything my office can do for any member of the community, please call us. You know, we're there to help the, or help the citizens of Indiana County, and we really appreciate the honor of doing that. He is Bob Manzi, Indiana County District Attorney. It is the voice of Indiana County. It's WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month, and coming up, the first of our traditional October series of visits uh, with the folks from IRMC who deal uh, most with breast cancer. Dina Dio.